thank you all for blessing us, for saving us, for loving us, Lord, thank you for this message today. Open your eyes and your eyes. Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple, how beautiful they were, of course. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things <clears throat> made by man? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be broken down. And he sat upon the Mount of Olives. As he sat upon, let me just stop with that broken down. We were thrown down. That's a, that's a summation kind of a thing. There will not be one stone that will not uh, that will stand for not be broken down. There are stones in the Bible as well. People are representing stones, hard hearted people. Something to bear in mind here. He continued to as he sat, as Jesus sat upon the Mount of Olives, and the Mount of Olives, he sat upon his throne, the mountain was his throne. Olives, either, uh, we are collectively his olives, destined to be crushed, that the Holy Spirit may flow forth from us. We are the olives in the Bible, okay? But we're being crushed and squeezed, and out of this comes the Holy Spirit. So, and it, and what Peter was speaking now, he sat upon the throne of the one, Mount of Olives. Okay. And here's where we start now. Says here, the disciples came up to him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming? And the sign means indication in Greek. And it says, So when these things shall be, and what shall be the sign? So we're looking for a when. is going to start. And that little introduction is going to start. And Jesus answered and spoke to him and said, now tell us when, when shall, we, shall these things be and what shall be the sign of our coming and of the end of the world? Now that doesn't mean the whole world is going to stop. It just means this age, the end of the age is going to stop. And here's where he started. And Jesus answered and said unto them, now what he's going to tell you is he's going to explain to us the first four seals of the apocalypse. Now, the, the, the seals of the apocalypse, nobody knows what they are. They're all, everybody's got different kinds of ideas. And now he's going to explain to us what the first four seals of the apocalypse are. That's what he's talking about. When? And he says, the first starts off and says, Take heed that no man deceive, deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, 
have Christ. And that means anointing. Like you heard on television, <coughs> uh, when preachers get up and say, this is the anointed uh, John, uh, Joseph, whatever. Uh, this is the anointed Charlie that's freaking out. This is the anointed, okay? Is any man going to come and say that? All right, means I got the word from Christ. I'm the one. So, and he shows you, okay, so he says, this is the first thing I look for. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. So let's look now at the, did you get notes? Okay, put note number one. Now what happened? This is the first seal of the Holy Spirit, the Apocalypse. And, and, and this is Revelation chapter 6, verse 22. And I saw when the Lamb, that's the Lamb of God, Jesus, and I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw and behold a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto, was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. That's the text. Let's look at what the names are. And I saw, Jesus says, and I saw when the Lamb of God opened one of the seals, no force of the seals, seven seals there are. Have been locked, particularly the first four seals are locked. Nobody knows what, what they meant. So now, Jesus Christ is for us. You who are listening now, going to unlock the first four seals. So this is a huge deal. He's going to unlock the first four seals. Watch. What are you doing? We have to get the Lamb of God. And the Lamb of God opened. One of the seals, and that's the first seal of the four seals of the apocalypse. And I heard as it were the noise of thunder, and that's firmly in, in heaven. But one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. Now I'm going to stop here and explain something that's going to be tough to happen. I'll just tell you. One of the four beasts, the four beasts are the creatures, living creatures, or living things, okay? These are four speaking aliens. They're found in five or six so they have uh, <coughs> two or three different kinds of heads and they have wings and arms and legs go this way and that way and all kinds of strange descriptions. I mean, definitely not human beings. Okay. What's the in the Bible? And during the Bible, pretty much in two places in Ezekiel, the whole chapter, chapter one, deals with these four creatures. Okay. And in the book of Revelation, uh, it's, they're called uh, the, the four beasts, and you find them appear eleven times in the Book of Revelation. These strange creatures that are wild, but they speak. And also in the Book of Revelation, you'll see that, that there's a, a convention, kind of convention around the throne of God, and the four beasts are on the, the inner of innermost of the convention. In other words, there's the four elders around them. There's person, four beasts. Then there's the four elders around them. Then it's a four years or this is not the four elders, but the elders around them. Then it goes around and around and around to the angels, okay? But the four beasts are closer to God than anybody else. And the demons. And you'll see that, you'll see, find them in uh, Revelation 4 through, uh, 4 through 11, and Ezekiel uh, chapter 1, the whole chapter, verses 1 through 28. They're there. You're why would God put uh, Walt Disney type critters in heaven? Especially in the book of Revelation, Adam speaking and heaven in, in close, close proximity, close proximity to, 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 to God. On top of that. He likes the variety. Uh, he does more than that. <laughs> so the point is, is that what we're not is here, we have to start doing these things. I don't I want to take you out of that just a minute. There's no question about it that there's aliens. And even the, 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 the government admits that now. Uh, they just started bidding it a couple years ago. These flying saucers are actually uh, uh, miles of white aliens. They come like, just to give an example, 10,000 miles an hour this way, and then they have to stop. Just stop, just stop, and go back the other way again. That's impossible. Gravity and everything. They do, they do all kinds of things. They got pictures of it. They've proven that, 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 that the aliens do exist. Well, aliens exist in the bottom too. But they're, and they're very, very important. So now let's do this one with that much the kind of huge here. Let me just go on this thing. And one of the four beasts is saying, what did the four beasts? 
said, Manager, for my name, she had Christ, you shall receive man. That's the first year. Now it talks about the second year. And you shall hear of waters and rumors of water. See, it should be not trouble. Trouble means to wail, to cry, to not be frightened. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Okay, let's stop and look around. Do you hear about wars and rumors of war? There's wars going on. Oh, we're involved in war in, in, in Ukraine and, 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 and in Israel, but there are other wars going on. There's wars all over the place. Wars by wars, okay? And it says here, the minutes of war. You shall hear, hear of wars, rules of war. Be ye not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So let's go look at the second seal and see what this is. That's number two uh, there in the footnote, Revelation 6, verses 3 and 4. And when he had opened the second seal, that's Jesus Christ opened the seals now. When he had opened the second seal, that is, unlocked the second seal. I heard the second beast, which is a living thing, say, Come and see, it's man to get. Well, these are really heavy duty commands to come from one white text of God. And there went out another horse of as a power that was red, red as a color of blood. And power was given to him that sat therein, thereon to control and to take peace from the earth. That they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. Now, this is again wars, rumors of wars, okay? That they should kill one another. There was given unto them a great sword. We were given a great sword. We haven't used the bow yet, but the great sword is nuclear weapons. That's the greatest sword there is nuclear weapons. So, they had the technology we used nuclear weapons uh, twice uh, in, in, in Japan uh, in, in the 40s. <coughs> what are we looking at now? Wars, wars and rumors of wars. So, Tom Berger, we ask Tom Berger, we have wars and rumors of wars. Let's go back up there to the text of Matthew. Okay, starting again. And then he said, after, after he said, said that, that the end is not yet, he, that word, the two is, he said, for nation shall rise against nation. You know what that means in Greek? It means it means race. For race shall rise against race. It's a chain. Hasn't that been happening? Absolutely. Race against race. Okay, primarily blacks against whites. But then they're, they're doing all kinds of things. Race against race. And then nation against nation. That means race. And kingdom against kingdom. And the kingdom means the realm. That means a country. Country against country. These countries are fighting. Right? And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Wait a minute. What is this now? He's going to have race against race, the fighting and the, uh, the, the race is fighting against whatever. And uh, the country against country. We're we'll having earthquakes and that we're having earthquakes and all over. Famines, famines, destitution, scarcity of food, hunger. That's all over the world. We're having that all over the world. That says here, we well, continue now. And the king who did that, and there should be famines, that's hunger, and pestilences. Pestilences. Remember, remember HIV? Remember COVID 19? Those are pestilences. They're diseases. They're plagues. Those two. And we have had those, don't we? We still do. In diverse places. So let's look now at the verse at footnote number three and see what how that seal looks like to us. Now this is the third seal in Revelation chapter six, verses five and six. And when it opened that seal the third seal, I heard the, the third beast that's a living thing say, Come and see. Right? That means right now in chapter three. And I beheld and lo, because he opened it. And I beheld him all black horse. Now, black is, is, is uh, 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 a horse of power. Starvation turns the skin black to the stars. Google says 
balances in his hand. The balance is a reading scale. You know, when you put it right here and right here, and you can jump it down like this, and you go, a reading scale in his hand. That's power. And I heard a voice in the mission of 4B say, a measure of wheat for a penny. A measure of wheat, wheat is a good nourishing grain. That's what we want. That's good stuff for a penny. A penny was a day's wages back then. <coughs> Three measures of barley. Now barley was was a what nourishing grain. It was commonly, commonly used for animal barley. That's for domestic animals with it, okay, as well as poor people with it. And notice the difference here. The one penny buys the good stuff, the other penny buys a measure of the good stuff, and three pennies buys it buys oh, and one penny also buys three measures of the bad stuff. I'll show you how bad the stuff was. And then it continues and says, I see that thou hurt not, but take not out the oil and the wine. Now, the oil and wine was a really good, good stuff. A luxury type of food, the oil and the wine. Also, incidentally, oil and wine, but both of them can represent the Holy Spirit. So, now, now let us go to our footnote A underneath, underneath this uh, tree. Says Luke chapter 21, verse 10 and 11. Then said Jesus unto them, Grace, as nation shall rise against grace, and kingdom around country against world country. And three earthquakes, and they're happening around the world too, are listening to those of all of all, all, all three earthquakes. Yeah. And the great earthquakes shall be in divers many places, famines and pestilences, and fearful sights, and great signs. And the great I mean, shall there be from heaven, and great signs, and I'm looking for the great signs from heaven. Go back up to our text, and command him. We were just in the double soul, and what we had here is that things are happening now. We don't have to wait two years or ten years or twenty years for these things to be happening. They're happening now in abundance. They've been happening for at least the last three and a half years. We've been noticing. Okay. So we'll back up again. All it says anything I might play some baggage places. All these, now he's talking about, Jesus is talking about the latter three seals that he just went through. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Oh, and we have had a rough time. Have we not? What does it mean, sorrows, when the Greek pains or throws of childbirth, and it's especially of childbirth, pains, travail, uh, heading toward the, the, the birth of the mature evil. The, the great the tribulation is evil. Or a great tribulation um, and as a as a as a pregnant child, pregnant woman. But the uh, great tribulation is, is it happens. How will I say? Well just let me take a look. Because uh, I left off that left off what he said there. Um when he said, in all these, the latter three shows are the beginning of their sorrows. So he just explained 
Bridge or Street Shield off the floor that he will explain. There's one more shield that he's going to explain out to us. Right down here, right at the bottom, I have the intensity, intensification of great sorrow to people three and a half years of great tribulation. If you have tribulation, chapter 6, verses 7 and 8. And when he had opened this, unlocked the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast, a living thing, say, come and see that command again. Every time those, those creatures gave the command to come and see, let's insist that and that's a vocalized command. And I looked and behold, a pale horse, now, pale in the Greek means greenish or verdict. That is reminiscent of, of the power, that's the horse power, of the Green New Deal, the Green New Deal. Remember the Green New Deal that we heard about for three and a half years? From Biden? That's green. And what it is here, and behold, a pale horse. So it's a hint. Now, it may not be that, but it sure looks like it probably is. And that, if we can say it that way, which involves electrical cars and all this other kind of stuff that's essentially hurting us. And it's going to put down too. And I looked and behold a pale horse, and his name is Sarah him was, uh oh, death. And hell followed with him. Whoa. Because this is an intensification of the tribulation of the sorrows we had in the first three years. A great intensification. Now we got three and a half years of great uh, sorrow. And his name was said on him on this horse was death, and hell followed with him. Now that's kind of scary. Except that the true Christians, he's not talking about you anymore. How come I know that? Well, are Christians gonna go to hell? Uh, anybody here think a Christian's gonna go to hell? No, Christians don't go to hell. They've been forgiven. So, he's talking about all the unsaved that are left now. That means that previous to this, previous or the beginning of this, of this particular seal, we have been raptured out. We've already been taken, taken out because what's left is, is, is subject to death and hell all with him. And they're going to hell. All the unsaved are going to hell. Power was given unto them, thus death and unto uh, the hell, over the fourth part of the earth, to kill with the sword, to kill with hunger, to kill with death, and to kill with the beast of the earth. I have put in there, kill with the rest to kill with the sword, and it says, and with hunger and with death. Well, it means to kill as well. In other words, to kill with the sword, to kill with hunger, to kill with death, and with the beast of the earth. Now, interestingly enough, we've been talking about the four beasts, which are good creatures, good to God, or right next to God. Uh, but this beast, these beasts, right here, this last, last part, are the same one, different word. Okay? And these are, in the Greek, dangerous animals, venomous wild beasts. It comes from the root word, which means wild animal of the earth. So it's going to be, and kill, and kill with the beasts of the earth. Now, who are the beasts of the earth? Look at the footnote. Ecclesiastes 3, 3.18. God speaking, I said in my heart, concerning the estate of the sons of men, it's all about men now, men women, that God might manifest that he may compare to them, and that they might see that they themselves are beasts. Hebrew definition of wild animals. That's what's going to be left. Then it goes on, starts talking about the fifth seal, the sixth seal, the seventh seal. But we 
know we're talking about more say because Jesus didn't, didn't speak very eloquently. He only spoke, spoke during the first four seals. And he only spoke at, at every single time the, the beast said, come and see. This has happened now. This has happened. <coughs> and this was the end result of it, of the intensification of three and a half years of the Now, we've been kind of all discomforted and uh, kind of pushed around with the lied to like crazy for the last three and a half years now. Okay. That was nothing. It's coming up three and a half years. It's going to great. Ten, twenty times strong evolution. Ten, twenty times more. Ten, twenty times seven. Ten, twenty times earth. That's all about to come. Come back. We're about to enter into the great tribulation. And what God wants us to know, every one of us here today, and all those in the internet. He's going to come down because the Bible says we're not to suffer suffer God's wrath. So we're not to suffer this. God's going to take us out of that. He's going to wrap us up and go to where tribulation is. And it's in the process. I talked to you two weeks ago, a week ago, about what's going to happen. Because next, what next? Matthew talks about is the desolation and desolation to grow. Domination and desolation is where to you. He said, this is what's going to happen. This, this is what's happening now. It's right here. It's not hidden anymore. He opened the seals for us. And those are the only four seals he opened. Those are the only four seals he opened. All the rest of the seals are more spiritual. It has a more spiritual. This is physical. This is physical. This is happening. You ready? You ready to leave? Now you see why Said when I started, this is very special. I believe it is. 
maybe the most important message I delivered to me to save a bunch of souls. Perhaps not here, but in the internet conversation. I should now this man in the form. Can't just well, I'll uh, I'll 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 convert to that maybe some other time right now. I don't I don't need to go to heaven. I don't I don't really believe that stuff. Or I'm gonna continue doing this now. God doesn't want us to do this thing already. I'm gonna do it. I'm trying to God. I'm gonna do it anyway. Be ready to meet your maker. If never before, be ready to meet your maker. Now, a lot of people are not saying that one again. So they're definitely not ready at all to meet your maker. So the Lord said, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ died on the cross. It's in the Bible. No, I'm sorry. It says, Will men rob God? Then you have robbed me. Open the Bible. Talk to everybody. <laughs> well, uh, but, but uh, what? what? What do you say? Where in heaven robbed it? How we robbed it? And he answers, In ties. Cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Now, boy, that verse right there got to make you think. You are cursed with a curse. Now, look at some of us pay like thirty dollars a week, so your time is ten percent, three bucks. Some of us make three hundred or three thousand dollars a week. That's, that's a, a thirty dollars a time or, or three hundred a time. But the point is this. Even 
if you're only making a dollar, you should tie 10% of that dollar, which is 10 cents. You got to obey the Lord. What did he just say here? If you don't obey him, you are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me. Bring me all the tithes into the storehouse, that's this, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me not here with saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven above you, if you tithe, the windows of heaven will open, and you will receive so much tithe, so much blessing, that you will not be able to contain it. I will not, I will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. If you obey, I'll pour a blessing upon you. Gee. So you're holding up your, your dollar, your ten dollars, your hundred dollars, or whatever it might be, thousand here, okay? God, I don't know what you Well, what's your, let's say, that's, you think a blessing's worth that? A blessing from God? And he said, not one blessing, but blessing. So that you'll pour it out off you onto other people. To open the windows of heaven above you. Decide if you obey him. You gotta be rocks in your head if you don't do that. <laughs> what are you venturing? Okay? I mean, it's your life. I'm trying to help you. But I'm telling you, wake up. He said, Oh, we're not playing the games anymore. We're not going this, that, whatever. <coughs> oh, God loves you. This is all true. But Heavy, heavy stuff is coming now. I mean, it was, it's been heavy, okay? So we no longer have, we all know that right now we do not, we no longer have a democracy. We have a dictatorship where free speech is not allowed. They will come after you for speaking against government, definitely. In fact, they may come after me for doing this, just saying those words as well. But that's a fact, and we all know that now. And so even when we're talking about things, we have to be careful what we say to other people because you don't know who, who will decide, well, I don't like you, I'll turn you into that. So it's right. This is no longer a democracy. And it's going to get worse. This, this, was, this was the beginning of sorrow. Now we're, we're about to enter into great sorrow. Get right with God. This may be, this may be your last chance. Maybe today you die or tomorrow. I got Jim's in the hospital now with, with, a, with a problem. Uh, and uh, we, all, we go back and forth. Okay? We're all sick and whatever. Don't gamble. One, receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And two, tithe every single time. That's the deal. And obey the Lord. Father God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hope to see you next next week. That's my goal. <laughs> <laughs> Music. Music. Music.